Alan, there's a line that basically goes, all things old may be new again, and I guess that kind of describes you and where you're going. Well, actually, I still feel old, but it is a lot of fun having a new aircraft project, and we're obviously very excited about the potential of this airplane, and yeah, there's a certain newness to, to starting over with a new company. Well, let's get the broad brush out here. What's happening? Well, basically, we've uh, merged with what was Farnborough Aircraft to form a new company, Kestrel Aircraft Company, that will finish the design, complete the certification, and then manufacture this airplane in Brunswick, Maine. And what's the timetable look like? One of the things we're doing is going to reevaluate everything, so we're backing away from specifics. You know, it'll be in that three-year sort of time frame, but at this point, we're not sure what the performance will be. We're not sure what the schedule will be. We're not sure what the price will be. We'll we'll come to that conclusion over uh, you know kind of a normal engineering process. It's been about a year since I left Cirrus, and I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people about some neat projects, several of which I'm still find pretty exciting. But this one just fit together in terms of both the people we were working with, um, the engineering, uh, them basically showing us how much had been accomplished and feeling really good about the basis as a starting point. And then lastly, the, the part in Maine coming together with the economic development piece, the closing of the Brunswick Naval Air Station, which provides for a fantastic manufacturing facility. One of the obvious questions is, you know, why Maine and what were the alternatives? And obviously we'd looked at a lot of other manufacturing alternatives. All of the objective standards would be met by a place like Maine, you know, in terms of the, the, the physical asset that's there in the, the closed uh, Brunswick Naval Air Station, the, the workforce, the, the composites perspective that they have there on the Maine coast. So it, it just felt, you know, very natural uh, place to, for us to be. What does Maine bring to the mix here? Well, a lot of things. First, obviously, it's the facility. Without that facility, all of the rest of the wonderful advantages couldn't really have come to play. But that facility in the closing of the Naval Air Station, two parallel 8,000 foot runways, a, a virtually new 170,000 square foot building. So that's the basis. Second part, obviously, is a great workforce. A lot of composite experience, a good, hardworking, productive group of people. And then last, from an economic development point of view, which is the flip side of the negative part of closing a military installation, which is obviously a huge financial hit to the local community, is a, a real open-mindedness to try new things and to try and put some jobs back in to replace that. So in this case, uh, the Midcoast Regional Redevelopment Authority, or MIRA as they call it, and Steve Levesque, the executive director, who happens to be a pilot, we just clicked right away and, and had a very good give and take on what were the possibilities. We didn't do a normal RFP process. We didn't send out you know, a document to 10 states and say bid on this. We said, what can you do? And they said, well, here's what we can do. What do you think about this? We said, well, that works, but what about this? And, and in a very collaborative process, I think we've got the good basis for a financing. Obviously, there's more work that needs to be done, um, both from an approval process in Maine and then from a, a raising the rest of the, the money that goes along with it, but it makes for a great foundation. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Now you're starting out with an aircraft that's already received a great amount of R&D. It's been through uh, a number of iterations and, and quite a bit of study. If you were to judge where you sit with this airplane as far as the scale of what's done versus what has to be done, where are you? Well, that needs to be split into a bunch of different categories. So obviously in the end, the goal is certified production. One of the big steps that people focus on, obviously, is the certification process. And that hasn't started in a formal basis yet. But that's the substantiation of what comes before that. From a basic design point of view, analysis, and, and so on, it's really far along. Uh, call it 50% of the way on that. So really good foundation. One of the things that led to us partnering was that every time I had a technical question for them, their answer was, would be along the lines of, well, we've got a study on that, or we've got some documentation, or, you know, let me show you three different configurations we've looked at. So, you know, they've been, they've been focused on certification since the late 1990s, and while obviously 
not being finished yet, they got a lot of really good work done. Ultimate question though, what does this airplane bring to the mix right now in a field populated by some pretty exceptional airplanes? What does this bring that heretofore hasn't been here? Yeah, well, uh, two different ways to split that question. First is this category versus others. And obviously, I've, I've been interested in the single engine jet range uh, or market for a, for a very long time. Yeah, I, it, it, we tried to keep it quiet, but it slipped out. I still think there's a huge market there for that, and it's an interesting niche that's clearly separate from this. That will be a lower cost, and in depending upon how you define performance, a lower performance airplane, and easy to airplane for people to move up to. So I think there's still a great market for that. This would be a niche above that, and in order to get to the right customer value point, you've got to figure out what else you can offer that the single engine jets can't do as easily. So it's going to have higher gross weight. It can do that because the propeller will get it off the ground and get it back in and out of the runways. So with the higher gross weight, what we're shooting for is larger payload, longer range, in and out of shorter runways. And, you know, we, we think that, that doing that defines this niche. So then now once you're inside that, obviously you've got a couple great airplanes in the, the TBM 850 and in the Pilatus PC-12. But this sort of fits in between. It's bigger than a, a TBM. Uh, smaller than a PC-12, significantly faster than a PC-12, and I think that the three kind of define interesting corners, and obviously that's what we want in a market, which I think in the long run also is good for everybody, is to let the customer try and decide which airplane they need. You know, some people will say, wow, you know, this is too big, I don't, I don't really need something that big, the TBM fits my message, mission. Other people will say, this is nice, but I really need more space, I'm going to get a PC-12. Okay, hopefully we'll increase the market for all of us. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. What is it that particularly intrigues you about this aircraft? I mean, you, you've been flying the system for a long time as a pilot. What makes this airplane uh, get your attention? Well, first of all, it's a great foundation, as we were just talking about. There's so much work that's already been accomplished on it. The next is, in terms of how I think in terms of flying the system, this is, is still a great personal transportation airplane. I know we'll sell them to corporate flight departments and air taxi operations and things like that. But as a personal transportation airplane, it's going to be, you know, load three couples and all your bags and go into some interesting smaller airports. So that's what that's the part I like about it is the performance and yet still being easy enough that it's a uh, owner operated kind of airplane. And obviously in in the changes that we'll be making a lot of them will be about instrument panel, about ergonomics, about intuitive operation. Everything's still on the table. It's going to be a single engine turboprop that's that's composite, but but pretty much everything will be looked at. PT6 obviously a bulletproof engine, great great history, but we'll want to make sure we look at the alternatives. From an avionics point of view, it'll obviously have a glass cockpit. It's something that uh, has just recently occurred to me as something that probably is a good idea in aviation. <laughs> More importantly than just a glass cockpit, because everybody has that nowadays, is how do you make it a really user-friendly, a simple, intuitive glass cockpit? And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's an Avidyne Rev 9 system in my Cirrus. I love the way it works. Garmin's working on a lot of interesting things. It'll be a fun competition between them. But it will be a user-friendly system because there are, there are some things that I've also seen that you know, don't work so well, and that won't be in the airplane. Single pilot IFR environment is not getting any co less complex as we stand here. And that's why it's essential that we make the pilot's job one of decision-making. What does he have to do to interact with the system, not what does he have to do to interact with the airplane. Final question for now. Okay, you're back in the game, and it's nice to see you with a, just a thoroughly exciting airplane, and airplane's going to meet a number of niches. But that can't be the only thing under the hat there, huh? No. Obviously, there will be a family of airplanes, and, and that becomes both a, a market requirement and a financial business structure requirement to be able to distribute the costs over. So what we'll do is we'll add to this airplane and this plane, whether it's derivatives of this airplane or other new models. And it's something that just makes financial sense, what we need to do for the investors.